Hi, everybody. Um, just want to talk about uh, kind of the macro economics here of the stock market, um, seeing what's been going on. So right here, we're looking at a monthly chart um, to kind of give us a better idea of what's been going on. Um, you can see on the MACD, um, moving average convergence and divergence, um, that we are kind of getting into this lower territory where we have hit um, like we hit on the 2001 uh, recession. So that level, um, at least according to MACD, has already been been reached. We haven't really reached the 2008 recession level yet. Um, but <clears throat> we have a little bit of a turnaround here. Now you can see that um, from the peak, um, we really hit the negative rounds just recently um, according to you know this kind of uh, measurement of that I have for the MACD. So the MACD has an 8, 16, 8 with a signal period of 8 on it. So um, once it crosses here, you know that it's pretty much a very serious downtrend or it could be, should be considered a downtrend. So you can see there's been a couple spots um, historically where we almost hit a downtrend of a negative. A um, couple spots back in here and you can see for coronavirus, um, that was pretty serious as well. But actually, what we're talking about now um, may be considered more serious. So um, it's just kind of a debate um, looking at this. Now, um, you might want to also look at the uh, daily chart, or excuse me, this is the weekly chart. Sorry. So um, on the weekly chart, you can see that coronavirus, um, because it happened so quick, um, it was kind of erased within part of that month. Um, and then it would recover so quickly. But when you have the weekly chart up, you can kind of see uh, how significant um, these drops are. So now you can start to see that um, <clears throat> this was a rather fast drop um, and a little bit faster drop than uh, what happened in 2008. So we're actually doing worse than 2008, at least according to the MACD. Um, so that was pretty serious. Um, recession, you can see that um, most people would say that 2008 was worse than 2001. Um, but uh, you can see right in here, this is the the worst of it was probably around 2008 here. So um, 2009 just started right around the start of 2009. So, um, but um, where are we going from here? Um, you know, you'd have to take the weekly chart and see. So we kind of did have a little bit of a mini recovery um, that was pretty significant. Um, and we're kind of heading back towards a recovery of some sort here. Um, now, the question is, how far will we go up uh, on these charts? So on the weekly chart, if you look in here, this green candle signifies that the um, gap is getting larger between these two, the signal line and the MACD line, meaning the MACD is actually getting to be more positive. So as long as these stay green um, on the histogram, um, that's a very good sign uh, for uh, basically uh, positive growth so um, it looks like you know we could hit um, pretty high levels here um, at least according to the chart now keep in mind that this is still definitely considered a downtrend because we are in negative territory on the MACD um, and this is just only recently curved around on the signal line and so it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to be in an uptrend anytime soon um, at the earliest the uptrend could be started and be around uh, 11 21 so basically the end of the month here um perhaps would be the earliest that we could see it and more likely um the start of the year of next year so um that's basically um looking at the two scenarios so the way i did that is basically by kind of like estimating here so you can look at this line and then you look at the intersection here which is basically around Christmas, right? So, and if you want to do really optimistic, you can do this one. And that was basically start of December. So technically I would say December 1st is when we could start to really say if this is an uptrend or just part of a further downtrend. So, um, and we'll probably know halfway between there. We'll probably know uh, around the next couple of weeks what the situation really is. So the other lines that we would need to draw on this chart are basically this line up in here, um, going from there to there, and then another one uh, kind of going from there. Um, and then you can see that that one would suggest that if we can break this point at the end of November, right, 
1121. If we can start to break it any time above that line would be great news. Um, and then we could probably be in a positive trend. So breaking that line is very important. That's um, basically a uh, top line here. So, so to do that, we would have to get all of November being very positive, um, which is pretty unlikely. It's unlikely that we'll see a full November being so strong. Um, and we're already starting to see a little bit of some flattening here. Now, and you saw in this line, this one kind of went up a little bit faster. This one here is not so much. Um, you can see the signal line is kind of laying a little bit more flat. Now, in terms of the volume, um, we are seeing some peaks in the volume right around here and then some lower peaks around here. So, And when you compare those, um, it actually looks like we're a little bit on the low side, 84 or 85 versus 64. So basically these high, whenever it goes positive, it doesn't really get enough kick in it. Um, so anytime we do get above this 64 level, which we kind of made it above, uh, last week a little bit in volume so that was good to see some positive volume more than we might expect and then certainly we saw a lot of positive volume back in here uh, in the, uh, August so uh, but you know this negative volume just kept hitting negative it didn't hit quite as bad as it did so we could draw some perhaps a lower bounds line off of this kind of showing some positivity there um, and then this one uh, also kind of coming down into here. So that was maybe one curve around. So we are seeing still the, the convergence of uh, these two channel lines here on the lower and the higher still converge on a lower bounds. Um, that's really sensitive on what happens in the next few weeks if, if we can bring this line up um, based on the volume. So if the volume is still pretty positive, um, but it's actually what I'm seeing is less volume uh, in the market. So here's kind of the proof of that less volume in the market concept. So you can see this is a volume oscillator. We kind of went up in volume here and then we've been kind of going down. So we did kind of go up recently a little bit, but this was kind of a sharp drop in volume. It looks like we're kind of going back into the same phase um, here. So regardless of how we draw these lines, um, it's basically down. And then you can see that the low trend line here, if we draw horizontal, is something like about there. So we shouldn't get too much lower than that. Um, and we are already pretty low in the volume channel here. So, And when we measure volume and price, we basically get money flow. Uh, so the money flow definitely looks out of the market here um, you can see that there was um, some trend up here but it didn't even quite make it past this but it made a pretty good shot at making it almost past that level but still um, quite far down so you'd have to kind of draw these lines uh, somewhere along this range I'm trying to draw some lines here for you so we can see there's kind of a top piece here and kind of a bottom piece there um, so that looks pretty bad um, on money flow. So you can see that um, the money flow is still considered positive um, because of all this other positive volume in here. And then it was kind of got to be negative right in here. So um, and then it kind of dropped even more significantly right in this area here. So this was pretty much the bad part of the move in terms of money flowing out of the market. Um, and then some money flowed back into the market right in here. So for some reason, I really like the way this chart looks. Um, you can kind of see here um, several different points. You can see what happened in 2001. You can see what happened in 2008. You can see the COVID pretty clearly. And then you can kind of start to see what happened recently um, on the chart here. So you can see the MACD kind of went quite low. Um, even lower than 2008 level, um, and so things have been dropping uh, quite significantly. So another really great indicator that I like to use is money flow, um, and I think we discussed a little bit about it, but basically with money flow, it's price times volume, um, and you can see here on the Twigs money flow, each of these are money flows here. Um, each of them kind of show um, some kind of a downturn here and then some kind of an upturn in recent weeks. So um, what you can do with this, now it, this money flow, the conditions on it are 16 periods. So typically if you start sketching out drawings on these, 
um, it gives you some visibility about, um, you know, typically uh, anywhere between eight days to 16 days out. So one week to two weeks out. Um, and you can see here by these intersections, then you basically get to the start of the year um, uh, almost. So it gives you even more um, time frame than that. So you can see this is maybe two weeks out right here um, on this chart here when you look at the money flow here. So it tells you we're gonna have some kind of convergence um, and then possibly um, a downtrend uh, after that started. So it looks like we're kind of heading um, this top line is pretty steep here, um, and this one's pretty steep here, and I can even bring this up a little bit um, on the chart here. So uh, this one here and this one maybe not working for me right now. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so the regular money flow one um, shows uh, kind of a different picture, shows a faster recovery on this side, um, and you can see um, this shows a rather slow recovery. Um, and maybe part of that is due to the lower volume in here, um, even though we did have pretty big price moves um, moving along here. So, um, but what we can do is still kind of draw some lines here and make some estimates um, based on what we see. So that gives us pretty far visibility out. Um, I mean, we're looking way out into next year um, on these money flow. So it's kind of saying that the money flow is um, looking it's going positive right now, but it's kind of been these negative money flows have been pretty harsh um, on the negative side. So it does like to bounce and then it goes down again and so on. So anytime we're below 50 on this particular version, that means we're basically looking at a negative money flow. We are a positive money flow right now, um, but um, you know, we only recently went above 50 um, right on the 17th of this month, so of last month, excuse me, so it's middle of the month, right? And we're at the first today. So that's kind of how uh, money flow works. Now, the Chinkin money flow um, is also another money flow version, and we can see here um, that it shows some similar characteristics to the other money flows, um, and yet um, maybe also this line here. So you can see um, that this is kind of giving us some pretty far insight um, into next year. So it shows um, kind of a high gap here and then a kind of a quick gap here. So this is saying that we may make a quick decision pretty soon here on the negative path, or we could kind of break this cycle. And it really depends on what happens anytime between any, any of these days here, you know, um, could break the cycle and go up into the higher range. But there's really two cycles that we got to break. So we'd have to break this cycle too to really be in positive territory. So meaning most of the market would say price is the price action looks really positive. So we got two um, kind of trend lines to break here. Um, they're both looking pretty, pretty tough to beat. Um, and then even a third line you could say in here, right? So there's a third line there. Um, and that's pretty much the main lines. And there's a probably even a fourth line right in there so it looks like these look pretty strong on the downward side and it looks pretty much in agreement on those peaks there and there so it is looking like we're kind of if we don't break this soon um, it's going to be a bad news um, for the price action so we have to break it um, looks like we're going to break two of these pretty easily we've already kind of broken one back in here um, but um you know, that's basically how the price action goes. So this one works on a zero line. So you can see anything above zero is considered a positive trend. Anything below zero is considered a negative trend. Um, and all three of these money flow indicators are very helpful. Um, and it turns out that it's nice to graph on all three because we couldn't really see, I mean, we kind of see some of the same characteristics. We see that long line there um, and we see a pretty solid line here, um, maybe another trend line even in here, like at that level. So, um, but we do see the sharp lines here, just not as clear um, unless you use all three of the money flows. So here you can see that we're still kind of on this negative line and we might just bounce below zero um, on the twigs money flow for quite some time. Um, and basically anytime we get break any of these trend lines, we're kind of looking at some positive territory. Now the really best positive news we had was really up in here 
Um, and that shows, you know, quite a long time to break to get up to there. So we're looking at December at the earliest to get up into that line. So that's like in here and we won't, I mean, we have to, we have quite a big move to go um, to get up into the high range here. And that's what it shows here as well. So to get to this peak um, was quite a feat. Um, and we kind of have to break these other trend lines here that we saw some sub kind of some um, internal internal forces um, among these peaks. So there's kind of some internal um, ones that um, we need to break as well. So next I want to talk about volatility in the market. Um, now volatility is typically considered a bad thing um, because when you have lots of volatility, prices usually go down um, in general because, but that's not always the case. Um, you know, you can have a positive volatility going up and huge moves going up, but a huge move isn't necessarily a stable move. Um, so that's kind of the philosophy here is that um, in general, volatility is a little bit of a scary thing for the market. Um, now, uh, the, one of the better indicators for that is the average to range. And you can see that the volatility for this definitely is going up. And we have kind of a range here on this. You can see there's kind of a been a almost a channel here tightening up and it's unlikely that it will continue up too far it would probably stop around this level um so you can see here that we have basically a peak in volatility um that we could reach um and, and actually it's just increasing so in recent days um it has been decreasing um you can see that there's been a decrease here so but there's still kind of this overall channel and this one kind of broke the channel here and we might have a break here and still come up again so <clears throat> it does give us a pretty good picture um, of what volatility might look like so it looks like you know we're seeing about a 10 point day so what does that mean um so basically what you can do um, with these volatility charts is you can measure so first of all, you got to find where your volatility is. So we think average volatility is about 10 points here. So if you take 10 points here, and 10 points is a 2.8% move. So we're talking about 2.8% moves are becoming pretty typical, right? Back in here, we saw very small moves, about four point moves. So four point move, you know, is about um, 1.1%, right? So basically, that's the difference um, between these uh, volatility moves and then you saw huge moves going back into coronavirus land right we saw um, upwards of you know uh, 18 points a day so that's a pretty big move um, 18 points um, on this market would show something like five you know we saw the stock market commonly going down five percent a day so that was a pretty traumatic experience uh, for coronavirus and even today we're starting to see certain downturns like you saw this downturn here um that one hit you know 13 points a day so 13 points is something like again uh well it's about 2.8 percent so um but 10 points is a little bit less than 2.8 let's let's see here we got um it's about 2.5 percent so um but anyway so we are looking at volatility potentially increasing and then peaking um, somewhere in this range here. So, um, and we kind of have a low, we have two lower thresholds here, right? We have a threshold down in here. Um, and I, let me draw the line here so we can draw this and what's going on uh, line. So um, we see a lower threshold down in here um, being the low base of the move and then kind of a mid, mid, mid volatility around nine points, which is where we're at right now, believe it or not. So, of these high moves and low moves. Um, and that's even higher, much higher than what we were seeing back in, you can see 2019 and so on, right? So we see back here, you know, the vol typical volatility was, you know, two points a day, um, which is almost a very small move up or down. So we are seeing some pretty fast moves um, ever since around 2017, right? So, and I can graph this back further. We can look at the weekly chart. Um, now these weekly chart shows that the volatility um, basically um, got to a, a low around 2021. 20, so, and then it actually peaked up here. Um, so it actually worked, um, it was pretty bad. Um, 
you know, back in here for coronavirus, you can see, um, and then you can see the volatility again dropping and then coming up again for these each of these kind of crashes. So um, that's one way to look at how this all works. The other way to look at volatility is just look at the standard deviation, um, which is right around uh, five points per day. So you can say that typically we're, you know, 66% of the time we're going to be within five points. So most of the time, <coughs> um, you know, you could have to measure this out on the graph and kind of say, well, where are we um, on these graphs? And that we can get a measurement for that if you need. So basically, I like to draw divide my oscillators up into different kinds of um, my technical analysis into price analysis, which this is a price only analysis here on this chart. Um, and then there's also one that I use for volume. Uh, so you can look at both of them. Um, I definitely recommend um, studying the volume carefully. Um, we can see here on the chart um, that we do have kind of a decrease in volume recently. We had kind of a height in volume. And then, so a decrease in volume doesn't necessarily mean negative volume, it just means a decrease in volume as we get to zero here. So you can also see there's been some times here where the volume has gotten pretty, pretty negative and then gone back to zero and then it went to positive. So that's typically one scenario. Um, we could bounce off of this. We have been in pretty positive volume land. Um, at least the past um, couple weeks. Um, and then now we might be entering into a new era of negative volume. So that looks pretty um, potential as a possibility. Um, certainly the chart here is showing that. So we got this candles going down here and then we kind of got a convergence here. So it looks like we still have um, some room to go. So as long as we don't break this, um, I would say that if we break this, um, then we have to start being concerned about negative volume, but actually volume still looks pretty positive because of what happened back here. Um, even this, we can maybe move a little bit. Man, my mouse is not working too good today. Um, but you can see there's maybe another trend line there. Um, but this trend line looks pretty accurate along that line. So it could break to the positive. So we could have um, sometime uh, next week, not, well, it looks like, Looks like on the 10th, um, so not this week, but next week or the week after, um, we could see a break to the positive side. So it could kind of stabilize here, and if it does, that's what that would mean. So basically, if we do get some stability here, we get price support at this level, um, which is above this point here, um, and then we could break out from there. So that's certainly one thing that we see from the volume side. So that's one of the reasons that we want to study volume carefully is because we didn't really see this on other charts, right? We saw some signs of this maybe um, when we looked at the, uh, let, me go, let me go back to the charts on the uh, money flow. So for the money flow, we did see, let's bring this down a little bit and then zoom in. So we did see some signs, but we didn't see, you know, we're seeing some, we see a crossover here on the fourth, um, but I'd have to move some of these these lines around uh, to really start to see, but we don't really see the same, we don't really see the same uh, technical analysis. So it is important um, to use kind of a multi, multiple technical analysis um, to see what's going on. Um, so on this chart, sorry, we got this a little confused here, um, but you can see that again, that's showing on the 10th, right? So we got a crossover there and then because it's below, um, excuse me, above zero, this would be, this is positive volume. We're expecting it to break on the positive side. So this looks like a channel and until we get to this point, we shouldn't break it on either side. We could break it. Recently, it looks like this was quite a ding big downtrend on volume, unexpected, and we could get uh, lower. Now, if that happens, right, if that happens, then we could be talking like, well, well we're going to get closer to the, to the zero line, right? So now, if we break it down to like here in the next couple of days, this could even break to a negative side, right? So if we get any negative volume below this line here, um, that's all a warning sign brings the the other trend line further and it, and eventually if it gets to be low enough on the negative volume side will break to the downside and kind of fall here so that's showing uh 
maybe a second possibility, right? So we could have initial break positive, right? If this continues to be stay flat or, or looking up a little bit. So it needs, even if, so the thing with these oscillators is that if they stay flat, that means it's still going to be positive. So it's still positive anytime it's above zero. Um, so as long as we kind of walk in this general vicinity and not straight down um, or at a steep angle, then it's definitely going to be a positive sign, right? Um, so um, it's really when we break the signal line or we break a downtrend that's greater than about a 45 degree angle on the charts. So the other interesting thing about volume is that when we don't have a lot of volume, it's kind of a signal that we shouldn't be trading. Um, because if the volume gets below a certain average line, so this was all pretty good trading in here, um, and then we kind of fell off um, right around. You could also do it on the zero line. So this is the zero line here, and anything above that, you really want to be on a positive side of the volume. So, um, But there's also the signal line here that can give you pre-notions of when to start trading. So... Um, in general, this is one way to trade um, based on the volume. You just want to see higher levels of volume or an ascending kind of a pattern here on the volume, and then you can kind of trade with the flow there. So as the volume increases and as the volume, as the price dropped here, this all got to be better and better trading. So the sooner that you got on this, the better. Um, obviously, maybe a lot of people would like to get on right around here because this is the zero line, and you can see there's a big drop right there. So that was a good trade. Um, and then there's some kind of slow days within this, and you can see the drop in the volume here. You saw a drop in the volume there, so you're not going to get a whole lot of trading done on days like that. Um, and you can see a very steep drop off here, um, kind of in these days. So there's kind of a steep and then a steep up increase, so that was maybe a good day um, just after a couple of bad days of trading. Um, and then you can say that once you're trading with the flow there, because you know that this was a positive move and you actually saw a negative move the following day, which showed up. So you saw the positive volume here and then a positive volume there. So this doesn't measure positive or negative volume. So unlike the Klinger oscillator, this will tell us positive or negative. So when this is down here on the negative side of zero, that is negative volume. Um, so you'll see red candles here typically um, when it's the sum. So you have to use um, a certain signal period, short cycle, and a long cycle. So it measures the number of volume negativity within a short cycle and compares that to a long cycle. Um, and it kind of works like a derivative, um, if you're familiar with calculus, um, kind of compares, takes the difference of two numbers. So, um, But it is very helpful to look at the cleaner volume oscillator. I use that um, very much. So, and then here's kind of our messy analysis um, for what happened um, with the uh, uh, the money flow. So, again, um, we saw that we kind of have a pretty stable, this looks, I mean, this is all from the downtrend, right? So we saw a reason we can draw a line down here is because um, the downtrend was kind of um, pretty pretty stable in the downside so this is looking like you know we're kind of hitting a point where we could keep going up and then if this is all true if this was true and this is true and even this says man we broke we broke a level right in here on the positive side so that says that this whole trend line was incorrect um it, it basically needs to be moved so now, if we are incorrect twice, we've been incorrect once because this is where the original trend line was. And if we break this one, that's entirely possible, right? Because we're right near zero um, and we could break that. So, and if that breaks, you know, we're looking at something really high up here. So it, it looks like, you know, the market does, in general, we want to see positive um, movements in the market, right? So this... Um, way up here i mean this is looking at all the peaks and that's essentially what happens right we try to regain each of these peaks and it starts with this peak then goes to this peak and then goes to this peak and so on and it keeps going back in time um, until you reach all the peaks um, and you kind of have to challenge each of these uh, price levels so i really like the force index um, because it's so simple and easy to understand um, how it's calculated it's just price times volume and then a sum of the range 
Um, so basically, uh, you know, what happens here is that the force um, has moved quite positive, um, but we kind of have this peak problem, right? So among the forces, we get up to that range, and then we have another level down in here. Now, the negative forces have been quite negative. So when we talk about the negatives, we're getting down into here, um, which is quite significant. So if we don't get up into these levels, we drop very significantly. Um, and sometimes that even breaks even what the what you think. So <coughs> now these kind of breaks are possible to spot. Um, you can see that you have one and then two and then three, and it kind of, you know, pumps up the point, and then you get a third one that's way beyond the level, and then you have even a fourth one. So because maybe this one also almost met it, met that thing. So this one's a little bit hard to predict this drop, uh, but you can see um, that um, once it dropped, it really dropped there. So. Um, and that almost dropped too much. So you can see you had a little bit of positivity here, and then that brought it back up into positive land. So, and then you went back down again. So um, it is a little bit difficult to spot these ones, but um, for the most part, um, if you really study it carefully, you can find the actual moves. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the study of volume and price action. Um, and basically, um, if you have any suggestions or ideas, be sure to comment down below. I'd like to talk to you about um, what's been going on in the stock market. Hopefully this has helped you out. Thanks a lot. See you.